July 14th, 2021 edition of the Urban League Jobs Network Digital Career Success Series brought to you by the National Urban League. I'm your host, Kenneth L. Johnson, president of the Harlem, New York based diversity recruitment firm, East Coast Executives. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. The Digital Career Success Series, DCSS, is a professional development series that helps members of our Urban League Young Professional chapters and other diverse job seekers develop new skill sets that will enhance their careers through digital platforms such as webinars and Facebook Live. The goal is to provide an opportunity for professional development right from one's computer. Today, I'm extremely excited for this DCSS LinkedIn Beyond the Basics, sponsored by Verizon, featuring Stacey Gordon, CEO and Chief Diversity, Chief Diversity Strategist at Re, we, Rework Work. I apologize, Stacey. Rework Work. Uh, Stacy's also an author. She's the author of Unbiased. And uh, listen, we're excited to have her here for the uh, League Digital Career Success Series. Stacy, how are you? I am wonderful. I'm in Los Angeles. It's hot today. I'm burning up. <laughs> you, you look very LA. You look comfortable, so we're, we're good with that. Look, I, you know, I was just, uh, I was just thinking. I had the opportunity to watch some of your work on LinkedIn just this week, uh, the diversity recruitment work and things of that nature. Uh, here on the Digital Career Success Series platform, we have a lot of HR types and recruitment and talent acquisition professionals. And uh, I just wanna encourage them to go to LinkedIn, tap in on Stacy's content because uh, she's doing some amazing work. So we're excited to have you here today. Uh, I know for a fact that people at Verizon are thrilled to have you here today presenting beyond the basics. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to pass it over to you and let you do what you do. All right, well, we'll say thank you to Verizon for sponsoring today. Appreciate them and appreciate uh, Urban League for inviting me to uh, to talk to all of you today. So who am I? Um, I am Stacey Gordon and I'm an executive advisor and diversity strategist. Uh, and my company is Rework Work and what I end up doing is working with CEOs and their executive teams to help them to identify where they can embed DEI into their goals and into their values. And so at our company, um, I actually spend a lot of time, like I said, working around that. I, I've been able to write articles for Fast Company and for Forbes. Uh, my book is called Unbiased, Addressing Unconscious Bias at Work. It came out a couple of months ago. I actually teach uh, inclusive leadership at Pepperdine University, and I'm also, it's also my alma, alma mater. So the work that I do, and you're probably wondering like, okay, if you're a diversity inclusion strategist, why are you here talking about LinkedIn? I'm gonna make the connection for you. So at Rework Work, um, our vision is to make all the difference in the world, right? And we wanna make a difference for all, and that means everyone. And the way that we do that is by moving leaders from awareness to advocacy. And this is the framework that we do it in, right? We're moving them through this, this framework. The reason that we do this work and why it's important, the work that we talk about too, with um, getting jobs, with looking at how people get hired. I used to actually work as a recruiter. So my company name used to be The Gordon Group when I worked as a recruiter. Um, and one day I was very frustrated talking to, to somebody and just telling them that we need to rework recruiting and onboarding and advancement, promotion. And I was like, we just need to rework work. And I was like, oh, that's what we should change the name of the company to is rework work. That's what we need to do is change everything. And um, it actually came out of the fact that even though I, when I was working as a recruiter, I would help, um, you know, I really was working as a, what, I, what you would call a diversity recruiter. But now I realize that there is no th such thing as diversity recruiting. There's just good recruiting. If you're doing recruiting well, then you will find that you're gonna have diversity in workplaces. So what was happening as a recruiter, I was seeing that companies were having this problem and you've probably seen this as a candidate, right? That you go into a job uh, or an interview and you see that there's nobody that looks like you. And so companies are struggling right now to bring in diverse candidates and you yourself are struggling to get the job and you're trying to figure out well, which comes first. Do, we, do I go to a company where I'm gonna be the only black, the only woman, the only, Latino person, or do I go to a company where they're already thriving and 
where I'm going to belong. And so there is this huge problem right now that companies are having is that they can't attract people of color to their workplace because they don't have any in their workplace. And who wants to be the first, right? The other problem is this is how are they to get it? So this is where the two things intersect because what we do at Rework Work is help companies understand that they have to answer this question. Companies have to answer the question of, do you really want that diverse candidate in the door in the first place? And if you do, uh, how are you gonna fix the issues that you've got at play? So on your, uh, from your standpoint as the candidate, you're also lo looking at this question and asking yourself, how am I to get in, right? Like, what does that look like? How do I get my foot in the door? Because I'm tired of being on this hamster wheel of applying and hearing nothing, applying and hearing nothing, and just not getting anywhere. So what, as we look at um, LinkedIn, and this is an older version of screenshot from uh, LinkedIn, probably from a couple of years ago, they keep changing up there. Um, they keep changing up their, their, their interface, right? So if we think about profile headline summary, I know we're talking about beyond the basics. So all of you know, profile, you need to get in there and put a profile picture up. I know that for some people, they still don't put a profile picture because they're concerned. Well, if I put a profile picture and I'm black and I think that I might not get hired because I'm black, I'm not gonna have as big of an opportunity. You gotta get past that and realize that if you don't have a picture on LinkedIn, no one's looking at you. They think you've got something to hide. You seem like some scary person. If you, there's just, you're just not getting hired without a picture on LinkedIn at this stage. So you have to get over that. Um, you also want to make sure that your headline, you know, mine is constantly changing. That's not what it says anymore. You'll actually see on this next slide because uh, this is, you know, the new update to their interface. I've changed it. It says chief diversity strategist. I actually think I changed it again, and now it says executive advisor and diversity strategist. So you get to as you're looking for jobs, you get to change this. You get to really put out there, who are you and what are you saying to the world? Because that's the first thing people read about you. Uh, it used to be that back in the day, that headline was the same as whatever was the, the title of your first job that's listed in your profile, but that's not true anymore. They can be different, but I think there's a way you have to go in and make sure it's different. And when you update your last job, it sometimes will go ahead and update your headline. And you want to make sure that you're clear about what your headline is actually saying. Stacey, Can I go back I have a question for you. Yes. Is it is it true that if someone does not have a photo on their LinkedIn profile, the algorithm will rate them, I guess, as incomplete and not necessarily include them in normal feed and search requests? Well, it will rate you as, you know, sort of incomplete, right? So, you know, when you go in, it will tell you sort of how complete your profile is. So all these different sections that we're about to go through here, if you don't have something in there, it is going to rate you as um, sort of as a lesser profile. What that does in the algorithm, I could not tell you, right? I don't know. But I also think it depends upon what search terms people are putting in or recruiters are putting in when they search. It also depends upon what their network looks like, because I'll tell you, my network has changed vastly, vastly, because of um, the fact that I've started uh, responding to people, like a, a couple of the, the courses that I have. So I have four courses on LinkedIn learning platform. We'll talk about that part later, right? But in the LinkedIn learning platform, I have a course that's been translated into other languages. So because of that, people will reach out to me in other languages. My um, feed, right? The algorithm then picks up that I'm responding to people in other languages. And I'll just go to Google Translate and because somebody will send me a message or they'll do a post, right? And say, thank you for the course. The more that you interact on LinkedIn and the more that you open up your network to people that aren't just the ones in your same geographic location or just the ones who speak English or just whatever, right? The, after a while, the, the algorithm will pick up on that and see that, oh, you have a broader reach and you will start um, getting contacted and seen by broader individuals. So that's kind of, I think, how that works a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I'll actually skip this and go back. So this is what the new section looks like. The reason I, I wanted to show you the difference is that the difference here now is that you have this open to work section. You should see this on your profile. And that is, it's not a new thing. It came in, you know, a couple of years ago, but what a 
is interesting about that is that you can get to this from a few different places. You can literally click this button here that says open work. You can click down, down, um, and get over here, here we go. So open to work over here. You can also down here, click this area where it says show recruiters you're open to work. And you can go into your settings and still get to that same area. So they have it in a bunch of different areas, which means it's important to them, right? Like that's something that they're pushing because they've got three different ways, at least three different ways for you to be able to show that you're open to work. So they want you using those features. Uh, so that's something to think about. And what happens is when you do that, you, um, oh, actually, before I get to that, I wanna show you this. So if you click on more in your uh, profile and you'll see this will pop up, share profile in a message, save to PDF, build a resume. So there's a couple of additional features they've put in here where you can actually build a resume um, out of your profile. And what happens when you do that is um, when you click build a resume, you'll see it says select resume. You can actually just upload one or you can create it from your profile. So there's some more tools to help you kind of get your uh, information out to recruiters. Honestly, though, I don't like using any of these tools that help you build a resume. You need to build your resume from scratch. Um, and that's not just because I have a course on building resumes, but it's because I, I think you can use a resume tool to help you identify what are the things that you need to do. But what ends up happening is you end up with a resume that looks kind of what, just like everybody else's. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're making yours stand out a little bit, right? So, um, and talking of resumes, you also don't want your LinkedIn profile to mirror exactly your resume, because otherwise what's the point, right? Your LinkedIn profile shouldn't be a resume. Your LinkedIn profile is a place where you get to expand on all the things that you don't get to tell people in a resume because you just don't have enough space. So there's no point just cutting and pasting from your resume and putting that into LinkedIn because then why is anyone gonna look at your LinkedIn profile? LinkedIn, you really have the opportunity to put in a lot of information here and make it stand out, make it look good. So you'll see on mine, you see those four little um, thumbnails are my courses that are on LinkedIn's online learning platform. But you have the ability in each of your um, your experiences, each of your jobs to actually go in and upload things. So you can upload a video of you talking at an event. You can upload um, a PDF of something that you wrote. You can upload, you know, if you're creative and in marketing and you created some sort of marketing strategy and you want to upload it here, you've got a slideshow, whatever it is that you've got, you can upload it here. So people can immediately see proof of work, like what you've done. And it's right there in your profile. So I have an article pinned here uh, for, for Rework Work, and I've got my courses pinned for LinkedIn. You also want to link to your company. So in the right here, right, the little logos, you want to actually go find the company and link specifically to it and not just type in your company, because what that's going to give you is the, um, you want to be able to, for people to see, right, logos, that information. So those are some of the things. Education, that basic, we know this. I'm just putting it in here as a reminder, like fill it out, right? Complete these areas, put in your experience. If you volunteered anywhere, anything that you've done, stick it in there, get a license, certification, all of that, right? Put it in. So skills and endorsements. I think the interesting thing about getting to the skills and the um, endorsements part is, we want to request endorsements, right? And we also wanna request recommendations. When we do that though, we've gotta do it in a way that someone's gonna actually wanna do it. Don't just randomly ask people. You want to really reach out and um, get people who, who know you and who know what you have done um, because you do want to be able to build this up and show that you know what you're talking about. So the whole point of LinkedIn, at least to me, right? It's like two things. One is to showcase your expertise, two, to get connections. So as you have the ability to do that, right? And here's the recommendations area. So you wanna be able to ask for a recommendation They make it really easy for you to be able to do that now. You just click the button, you can send it to somebody, but here's the deal. Give somebody language, right? Make it easy for them. Don't just ask them for a recommendation, tell them what you want them to say, and then let them know. Feel free to tweak it however you want, but here's a uh, language that you could use. So that helps them remember what it is that you worked on together 
and it gives them the language right there. Then they can change it up a little bit. They can put it in their own words, but make it easy for people to do this for you. Don't just say, hey, can I get a recommendation and expect that someone's gonna sit down and draft it for you. You know, I have a question for you. So you had, you had showed the part where you have the thumbnails with your LinkedIn learning courses. Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't have LinkedIn learning courses, what are some of the other things that they could place in that spot to position them as a subject matter expert or to leverage their skill set as something that's of value to potential recruiters and hiring managers? Definitely. I mean, some of the things I mentioned, right, is like if you created a marketing strategy, if you've got a slideshow uh, of a presentation that you've done, um, it, it, you can upload just about anything there. I believe you can upload PDFs, uh, slideshows, you know, um, using Prezi or PowerPoint, um, Excel spreadsheets, articles. You can link to things on the internet. So if you've published an article somewhere, you can put in a link to it. There's a lot of different things that you can put in and not only can you put them there, but there's another area you can put them as well. So if it's specific to the job, you can put it into the, the, the job. But there's another area where you'll be able to add um, some of those items that you, um, you're able to, to use to showcase the expertise that you have. And then, oh, additional profile features. So this is an area that people will sometimes ignore, but you really should go down and look at your interests and see what's there, right? So you wanna look and see what are my interests and what, why, why is that important? Because one, it, that also is going to um, affect what shows up in your newsfeed. If, you are, if you've clicked these things as, places, as things you have an interest in, you're going to see more of those in your feed. Secondly, if you're applying for a job, you probably want to have their company as one of your interests because recruiters will look at that and see, right? Are you interested in our company? Well, you say you want to work here, but we are not, we're not listed as a company that you have an interest in. An, an interest in. So something that you want to do is constantly change that, right? You're in the running for a job, go there and put them in as an interest. Take them out later. Right? So don't overlook this area. Um, you want to make sure that you're doing that too. Um, articles and activities. So you can actually, it's not as prominent anymore. Articles, you know, like publishing an article using the LinkedIn um, article publication feature isn't as big a deal as it used to be. Everyone used to do it and now it's like, yeah, but it's still a great place to be able to write. Um, you know, it's the one place that you can write something and have it sort of published, right? Without having to put it into a publication. So this is an area where if you have a thought on something that's happening in your industry. You wanna write about um, you know, the, the, the values of the industry or a new thing that's happening that you, you know, have a different take on. You can write about it, post it there, and then you can share that. So that starts to create your own credibility. You don't have to wait to get published in the New York Times or in you know, Black Enterprise or any other publication. You can go ahead and put it in, in here. And, uh, and share it and get people commenting on it. So that's a great way to go in there is to your articles and um, write your own content. So you also have a dashboard, right? In your dashboard, you're probably like, oh, this is private to you. So no one else sees your dashboard. But the interesting thing about this is there's a section that says creator mode. And I'm gonna be 100% honest, I'm not even sure exactly what it does, but I do know <laughs> that it's another thing that LinkedIn is using to help to um, amplify your, your profile. So if you turn it on, you turn creator mode on, then what it will do is it's gonna highlight content on your profile. How do you get content on your profile? Write articles. So if you're using the article feature and you're writing articles, and you're posting and you're commenting on other people's and you turn creator mode on, it's gonna also amplify what you're writing. So couldn't tell you how the al algorithm does it, why they're doing it, but LinkedIn is constantly turning things on and off and trying things out. So when it's there and you can use it, do it um, and take advantage. So this is the other section is where you can put content. So this is at the top of my profile. It's literally like right underneath the heading, there's a featured area. And so you'll see there's these little arrows here because I actually have five courses. I have my four courses and my book featured here. Because again, you can put in links to things. You can put in, I believe you can upload graphics. You can put in pretty much whatever you want 
in this area. So this is a featured section. It doesn't have to go specifically in the job area. You can put it right at the top in this featured area. So um, I have featured my newsletter here. I featured my book here. And then I also added the courses, but I put them last because I already have them featured in the experience section. So I figured out you can only really see two at a time. So I put the, the other two up here. Um, as something to, to feature. So this is another thing and you can change it out, right? You can constantly change this feature different things. You don't have to keep this the same. So, you know, if you've got multiple things you want to feature, if you're looking for a specific type of job and you've got something, a white paper or something you wrote that you think would be really important to feature, feature it for that time being. And then when you don't need to anymore, you can take it down. Yeah, that's that's really a beyond the basics tip right there, because that, that's a virtual brag sheet for yourself, right? You right. can use that section to really position yourself uh, kind of seamlessly in your own profile. Uh, so, yeah, that's definitely a brag sheet. Also, I really appreciated what you shared about having uh, the companies that you're interested in or you're interviewing with. Uh, that, you're, that you connect with them or have them in companies of interest. Uh, for example, if, if people are interested in Verizon, uh, definitely I would have Verizon as one of those companies in my profile that I have interest in. And then when you go and receive information or you visit the Verizon career site, like you said, the hiring managers and recruiters are indeed going to look at your LinkedIn profile. And that's something great to have there that you're actually interested in their company. That's a great tip. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's all about just going a little bit beyond what's there, right? So again, this is basic. We all know you can look at your user profile statistics, right? But why I bring this up is that um, you do have this, this area here where you can see what you call interesting views, right? Again, I don't know what LinkedIn considers to be interesting for you versus me. Everyone's is going to be different. But what's, and I'm going to get back to what, what's important about that in a minute, but the settings is also in here, right? So again, a new thing they've added is you can, once you click on settings, it's gonna take you to this page. It's gonna pop up and ask you what type of job you're open to. So this is again, the open to section, right? So like I said, they've got in a bunch of different places, but they want you to do this. <laughs> so you can put in what kind of work you're looking for. Um, you can add different um, types of job titles. You can put in different job locations. You can put in start dates. And so I did a second screenshot so you can see a little bit more. It, it then as you scroll, it will ask you, you know, to put in start date. Do you want something immediate? Are you flexible? Um, you can then put in job types. I'm looking for contract, full-time, part-time, internship. You could you can click multiples of them. Once you do that, and you at the bottom here with this little carrot, it says um, choose who sees your open. When you click that, this will pop up, right? And you'll see it says, choose who sees your open, all LinkedIn members or recruiters only. So you have that option as well. Um, once you do all of that and you click add to profile, it will then show up on your profile as open to work. So that's how um, some people are, you know, if you've seen the open to work and you're not using it and you are looking for a job right now, you definitely wanna be doing this. So this might be a basic, you might've already done this, but for those people who didn't know and weren't, you know, weren't sure, this is how you would do it. Um, going back to the interesting views, the interesting views uh, come about because they pick people, I guess, that they think are um, interesting to you, again, based upon all the different algorithms of what's in your feed. And what you also get are, uh, if you look next to that, it says that two people have viewed me who work at University of Southern California. So you can also, and you can scroll, right? If you look here, this little, in the corner here, tiny little next to the end, LinkedIn, it is telling you, if you keep scrolling, it's gonna tell you how many people have viewed you at different companies. If you're looking to work at one of those companies, that's great. But if you haven't thought about working at one of those companies, you might wanna look and go, hmm, why are five people from Verizon looking at my profile? Let me go see who has looked at my profile. And this will tell you who specifically looked at your profile. So then this is your opportunity to connect with those people. So you don't wanna overlook this section because it's kind of giving you an idea of like who's looking at you and why might they be looking at you, right? Um, another thing is in-mails. So in your in-mail message, you have this opportunity, this is another newer thing, to set an away message, which means that every time somebody messages you, they will get a bounce back, right? Kind of like your out of office message. 
So this means that you can put something in there that gives people whatever you want, right? You can direct them to a personal website. You could put in your phone number and your email address if you are looking for work and you want to make sure people can contact you. You can put in whatever you want, you know, so that it doesn't have to be, I'm unavailable, I'm not checking my messages. It could be, hey, I'm open to work and I'm looking for a job in XYZ industry. And if you have a lead, please contact me, right? So that every person who messages you gets this. So you get to be creative about this and use it in a way that is going to be to your advantage. Now, premium user features, not everyone wants to use premium user. They're like, I can't afford it. I'm not doing this. It's too much money. I'm gonna tell you if you're looking for a job, do it because it's month to month. You don't have to be signed into a contract and do it for a month, right? Um, maybe you don't get Starbucks for that month and you get a premium business plan. I also can't tell you if it's still $59.99 because again, LinkedIn's constantly changing and so, uh, a few months back when I took this screenshot, I could see this. Now, when I went in to update the presentation to see, can I get this? I couldn't get this information because my profile is set up a little bit differently and I actually get a free um, premium account. So it doesn't tell me how much it costs. It just says that, you know, I have a premium account, uh, but I'm assuming it hasn't gone up from $60 a month. I want to hope. Um, and it also doesn't even give you these two these two things anymore. They've changed, right? It used to give you business insight and unlimited people viewing. They those two things you don't get that in uh, in pro anymore, unless you go up to like the recruiter levels or one of those other levels. So, but it is something to think about because what the premium user features are going to get you is sale, salary data. If you go to salary data, you're going to get a, a page that looks like this where you can put in. Um, your job title, where you are, and it's going to start to give you statistics, right? You can find out um, what jobs are top paying by location. And you can start to look at, you know, this is where you can start to do some research on um, what type of, you know, as you play around with titles, the titles are going to change slightly and it's going to change the um, how much you earn just based upon titles. So that can also be bargaining power for you when you go into a company and you have a, you know, a title in mind and their title is slightly different, maybe you can negotiate that you want a specific title because you know that that title is going to make it more prestigious for you, is going to earn you more money down the road. So things like that to think about as you um, use these statistics. We're also in this place where if you want to lead on LinkedIn, right? Groups, I didn't talk about community groups, um, well, community and groups. Um, people don't use, I mean, I won't say people don't use groups as much anymore. I'm in a ton of groups. I used to use groups all the time. Now I forget that they're there and I'm not in them as much. But for some people, some of those groups are thriving and they are really um, making impact. So another way for you, uh, again, this is sort of, this is basic. Everybody knows the groups are there. But what we have to remember is that, are we utilizing the groups? Are we utilizing them in a way that is going to help us um, to show that we are um, experts in our field and to obtain contacts that we might need to get the job that we're looking for? Going through industry groups um, and user groups is going to put you closer to some of the people that maybe you don't have a first connection with or even a second connection with. But if they're in that group, now you see, oh, here's this person who works at this company. And now you've got a reason to reach out to them because you can say, we're in this group together. And I noticed that you posted about X and I'm really interested in that. Would love to chat with you about it, right? So using the groups as fodder, right? As content for you to be able to reach out to somebody that maybe you would have no business reaching out to prior to. Um, our articles I already mentioned, is using those articles to demonstrate your expertise great way for you to be able to do that. Um, and those articles do get picked up in, um, in, in Google searches, right? And so be really cognizant and careful about what you title it. Make it something really interesting. It could get picked up in a Google search when people are talking about this specific area of expertise. And just posting. You want to be on there posting frequently, commenting on other people, um, you know, and adding value to posts that they're making so that you're showing up. So if you want to get a job at Verizon, you should be paying attention to Verizon leaders. What are they posting? What are they talking about? Are you commenting? Are you adding value um, to what's being shared? 
um, that's out there. So I, wanna, I know we've got tons of questions coming in. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I see, I see all of these questions popping into the chat and Q&A. I just wanna remind everybody to go over to the Q&A section and drop your, uh, drop your question in. After Stacy's presentation, we will have time to answer your questions. So please feel free to drop them in and we'll try to get to them all. Oh my goodness. So I'm just looking at the chat. Someone said premium is now $64.99. <laughs> well, it's like, gone up by $5 actually. But like, but like you said, it's month to month. So if you're in a job search and that information is of value to you, it may be well worth the $64. Right. It, it, it definitely is. So I, I mean, Look, I'm not, I don't get paid if you decide to, to get premium, right? That's, not <laughs> but I do think you have to look at the value um, of what it is that you were trying to accomplish. Um, the other thing that you, and I have to figure out, I don't even know if, if it, I think it gives you access. Let me go back to my premium slide here for a moment. It does. Okay, perfect. It does give you LinkedIn learning. So the other piece that I think is important is the LinkedIn learning because this is one of my courses, right? So you've got the writing a resume course. I will say this, right now, it doesn't matter. They're actually offering this for free. So regardless of whether you have premium or not, you can get access to this course for free um, because Microsoft, which you know owns LinkedIn, um, they've been doing a lot of promotion around helping people get into tech and different things. And so they've kept this particular course open um, and so the other thing about getting into LinkedIn learning for resources, because yes, you can go to Udemy, you can go to Coursera, you can, you know, there's so many other online platforms, right? You can go to all those different things. I'm not saying you have to go to LinkedIn learning, but this one is free. So you can take, definitely take a look at it. It's literally two hours of content, two hours plus of every single thing you need to know about writing a resume. So do I suggest you watch the entire thing? Absolutely not, because you bored to tears. But do I suggest that you go in and pick out the sections that might be helpful to you, the pieces that you are um, struggling with? Yes, go for it. Now, there are people who they'll watch the entire thing and send me messages and say, Stacey, I watched the whole thing. It was so great. And I'm like, kudos to you. You are <laughs> trying to do the thing. You want that job. And I get it. When you were job searching, you do everything that is necessary for you to um, to be seen as head and shoulders above everybody else. And so the, this course actually has tips for that as well as um, how to, to write the resume. And then there's a, I actually have the making a career change course as well. And you'll see, you can buy it for $29.99, but if you're getting pro, right, it's gonna be included as well as all the other courses that are in there. So yeah, I've got four courses on LinkedIn's online learning platform, but there's thousands of courses in there. So the thing about LinkedIn learning is, if you need to brush up on your Excel skills, if you need to learn production, if you were looking at change management, leadership, um, you know, uh, new manager training, microaggressions, uh, anything you possibly can wanna do, there is a course in LinkedIn's online learning platform. So if you're needing to brush up on um, something that you, you know, have maybe forgotten, skills you've forgotten, or if you wanna learn something new, take advantage of, especially if you're gonna do, do the, 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 you can do a free trial um, for this as well. You have a whole month, right? Get a plan. What am I gonna do? Te you know, treat it like school. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do this course and this course and this course and this course. You get a certificate when you're done. And again, that's something else that you can add to your LinkedIn profile to show that you have expertise in a specific area. So it's just more and more things in there that are gonna help you uh, with that. So. I'll just say this is my book. It's got nothing to do, well, it's not true. I was gonna say it's got nothing to do with hiring. That's absolutely false. It really has a lot to do with hiring, but from a leadership standpoint. Um, and so if you are a leader in the workplace and are looking, or if you need, maybe need to gift it to a leader in the workplace <laughs> because they need to update their hiring practices, this will help. Um, but you can definitely follow me on LinkedIn, um, on Facebook, on Twitter and on Instagram. So I'm on all the things. I'm not on TikTok just yet, <laughs> but I will be soon. I'm going to be doing some new videos on recruiting and other things. So we got a whole plan in mind. <laughs> so with that, it is Q&A time because I know we have a ton. <laughs> it, it, it looks like you have it all covered. I'm just checking out the social media stuff. Uh, again, please do not hesitate 
to um, to check out Stacy's content on LinkedIn. She's doing some great things. And actually, while you're searching around, uh, you might also want to consider visiting the Verizon.com forward slash about forward slash careers link and finding out information about careers at Verizon. Uh, I actually took a peek in a ton of great opportunities. I don't care if you're in tech, uh, organizational development, you're doing regular customer service work with a ton of opportunities listed on the Verizon uh, site in the career section. So please check that out. All right. So we have a question here about if the webinar will be available after the event. Indeed, it will be. But you'll need to visit the Urban League Jobs Network YouTube channel to get that information. Uh, so please go there. And you can check out this event and past events as well. All right. So Stacy, I'm going to jump in. Here we go. So yes. can you please expand on how to link your personal company in order to add the logo on your personal LinkedIn page? So you were speaking about, you know, linking through and having your company. How do people yeah. do that? So what you got to do is you have to search for your company. So here's the deal. If, you're, <clears throat> if your company doesn't have a logo up, right, you're not going to be able to do it, obviously. But you have to, when you go in, and it asks, you know, for your, your company, you have to search. I think there's usually a drop down. You start to type in your um, company name. The company will pop up. Now, what will happen though is because um, other people obviously have worked for your company, what some people, what will happen is sometimes you might find a, a version of your company that isn't the actual official version. You've got to find the official version and click that. And then it should automatically link. But obviously, like I said, if your company doesn't have a logo up, then it's it's when you link to it, there won't be a logo, um, unfortunately. But usually companies have gone in and they have um, put in a company logo because they usually have a company page and they have a company profile and they have all this information uh, about their company that they want up there. Got it. All right, so um, oh, you know what? <laughs> this is interesting, but I'm not going to put you on the spot here. And actually, I'm not going to put Kaya on the spot either. But uh, wants to know: Would you be able to do a LinkedIn audit? Uh, they've been working on adding to their profile, but could really use some feedback. I will suggest that maybe you connect with Stacy um, through LinkedIn well, after the programming, possibly. But uh, also, listen, the. National Urban League Career Fair and Expo is coming up. It's virtual this year uh, due to the pandemic, but historically there have been people there to assist uh, attendees with their LinkedIn profiles, uh, people there to do career coaching. It's all there. I've been a career coach maybe three or four years at past National Urban League Career Fair, so I do know the LinkedIn people stay really busy, and I would imagine they'll probably have that option again. So if you hold tight, that event, you'll probably be able to get an audit as well. All right. Yes, um, and, and I'll just say this. So unfortunately, I don't have the, the bandwidth anymore. I, I no longer work on the career side, but the reason I still talk about it is because one, it's important. I wanna make sure that people are getting access to information. Um, and I have moved to the side where I'm really trying to get companies to change their hiring practices because you can change your, your LinkedIn profile all day long and change your resume and do all the things. But if the company isn't ready to receive people of color, then all that work has gone you know, to waste. And I got really tired of seeing that over and over and over again. So that's why that's where I, the majority of my time gets spent. Um, but yes, we can, I'm, one of the things I'm looking at doing is adding an area for people to be able to go and do some referrals to places that help, but I know the, the Urban League Young Professionals, they're always doing events that are helpful um, to people who are looking for, for jobs and who want to do uh, resume audits. So I'm sure that there's a resource there that can help you, Mike. 99% um, positive, right, Ken? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> All right. So yeah. uh, Jenna wants to know, how do you view your dashboard? So your dashboard should just pop. It's literally on your profile. When you go to your profile, it's there, it's listed, and it just, it says um, private to you, right? But it's it should be right there on your profile page. Um, it's not anything that you have to click to go to. It just shows up, at least it does on mine. So if it doesn't for you, there might be a setting you have to turn on, but I'm pretty sure it just shows up for everybody. All right, let's go to this. And, and I'm interested in hearing about, hearing your answer to this. 
Uh, how important is it to have an upgraded, I guess, a LinkedIn account uh, versus the basic free option? It is not, in, in terms of for getting um, noticed by recruiters, not important at all. Nobody cares. Um, the only reason to have the upgraded profile is to get the upgraded um, information that we talked about, right? So access to the LinkedIn learning, um, access to salary statistics, um, access to be able to actually do more searching. Um, when you're searching for contacts, when you're looking for a job, uh, you know, you're, you're limited on the free version. Uh, version, you get more um, when you have a business profile uh, or at least a uh, pro profile. So there's just some of those things that come into that. Um, and kind of like, as I said, I'm actually gonna stop share for a sec and I will come back and we'll put that back up. But I'm gonna go back to, let me see. So this page here, I'll actually reshare this page. Uh, share screen, right? So this is the difference, right? You also get in-mails. So in-mails, what is that gonna do for you? It means you can reach out to people without ha having to be connected to them. You can send them a message. So that's helpful uh, to be able to contact someone. If you really are trying to get a hold of somebody um, in a company and you're not connected to them at all, an in-mail is going to allow you to be able to send them a message. Um, the other thing you want to do too, and this is nothing to do with LinkedIn, but just because um, career search and job search, career advisor, is finding people. It's kind of, it's not that difficult to find contact information for people on the internet. So if you can't find them through LinkedIn, or not, not that you can't find them, once you find them through LinkedIn, if you can't contact them because you don't have an email or you, they're not connected to you, you got two options. One is reach out to somebody who you know who is connected to them. And two, do a Google search. You can literally, if you search for that person, many times you can find their email address because it will show up in a, um, a report that maybe they help to author or uh, a presentation that they are on and their email address is in it. It takes some searching and you got to be diligent. But if you search specifically for for like PowerPoint files, for slide shares, for PDF documents, and that person's name, you will um, have pretty decent success rate in finding email addresses, or and at least you know, and you can always contact people by phone. I know, I know the millennials. Nobody likes to call anybody anymore. Everything's all text and email. But I swear the phone still works. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does indeed. It does indeed. I think I think the first time we connected was a phone call. Actually, I think one of us called one another. Right, listen, I want to get to this question. So, what is the best advice someone has given you related to job searching or DEI? And I want to jump in real quick on this one. I, I'm going to say that the best, well, some of the best advice that I've been given, especially as it relates to job searching and DEI, is really to do your research. Right. So, if you did research on let's say Verizon, you would have found out that 2018, 2019, 2020 voted the number one company for military professionals, right? Uh, 13 years in a row, top company for working mothers, 100% DEI score, and that's the diversity, I'm sorry, disability equality index score, and voted by Forbes as the 2020 best place to work winner. So like, if you're looking and you're in a job search and you want diversity information, sometimes, doing your research and, and getting information can be done by visiting the websites of the companies that you're interested in, right? So what's yeah. been some great advice that you've been given, Stacey? Um, as you were talking, I was trying to think because... <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. You're probably going to say, well, probably to, to take, stay, take my LinkedIn learning courses, right? That's the good no. advice? <laughs> no, it, it was, I was, because I spend a lot of time, right? Like I've always been the out of, out of the box person. So, um, I, I don't take advice. Well, I'll be honest. Um, and normally as like, if I have, a, if I have something in my head that I want to do, there's a job I want to get to, I'm getting to it. So even before, uh, you know, LinkedIn, as an example, I wanted to work at a, um, a law firm in New York City. I'll try to keep this short, but I wanted to work at this law firm. And I, I wanted to work there so badly because it was like largest law firm. It was, they were paying best salaries to paralegals. I was a paralegal at the time. And I was like, I want to work there. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know how to do it. 
And so what I did was, and I'm dating myself now, but I wrote a letter. I wrote a letter to, I went onto the website. I tried to figure out who the hiring manager was. I did a bunch of research. I ended up finding out who the hiring manager was. And I sent him a letter and I said, I want to work here. Um, and I also sent that letter by fax. Yes, fax. And if you are looking to work in banking, insurance, or law, try sending your resume by fax. Because you know what? Nobody uses fax machines anymore except those old archaic institutions. They still have fax numbers. And if you send your resume by fax, it will show up because what do they do? They take it and they put it on the desk of the person. <laughs> so no, what? That's, I'm telling you, that's, that's it still job, works. That's job search beyond the basics, right? That's not even, we've moved from LinkedIn beyond the basics in the job search. You know, here's what's funny about that though, right? So I used to just, I would FedEx my resume to companies, right? Because people, people were typically at, like, they're going to open up a FedEx package. Right. So I would just next day it. And I would guarantee that my resume would get on the desk while other right. people were kind of operating. You can still do that today, right? If FedEx comes to the, you know, director of whatever at Netflix, guess what? It's going on his desk. Now it might show up to his assistant, right? Or her assistant, but it's getting at least to the place you want it to get to. So I think that when the best advice I actually got though, so I said all that to say that I'm usually out there trying to do things that people are telling me not to do. So that's why I don't take advice well from others. But I do have one really good friend who um, back when I was um, in a full-time job and you, when you're looking for another job, right? You get into this place where sometimes you're just like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to find this next job. This, this is so hard. I hate job searching. And she really said, look, stay in that job. And rather than switch to something else before you're ready, take the time to, um, to learn, right? To, to use up all the resources that you possibly can. So do things like go to LinkedIn Learning, take another course, do all the things you need to do now because you're in a job that values you. And so before you jump to the next thing, make sure that when you are ready to jump, you are actually ready to jump, that you've done all the things you can do because once you get to a new job, you're a new man on the totem pole, right? At the bottom, and you don't have time for professional development. You don't get to go to the conferences. You don't get all those perks and all those things. So if you're in a place where you're, you want to make a career change or you wanna get a new job, just think before you leave, as long as you're not in a really awful, you know, abusive situation, right, for your manager, just think about, have you used up the resources that you have available to you? Do you have a professional development budget and have you used up your spend, right? Do that before you jump out of the frying pan and into the fire. All right, let's jump. Let's speaking of jumping out of the frying pan and into the fire, let's jump into some more of these questions here, right? Uh, so uh, we have one here. Can you hide any of your groups or followed companies so that they are not viewable to people who actually view your profile? I don't believe you can do that. I, I'm starting to wonder. Well, I guess everyone has their reasons for doing whatever, but yeah, I don't even know why that would be necessary. But you know, I I, I guess you're not. Just because you like a company doesn't, well, I guess if it's the competitors, right? But you still will want to do market research. Right. Either way it goes. And, and that's what you tell people because there's always going to be haters, right? Who will look at your LinkedIn profile and say, I saw you posted blah, blah, blah. Why'd you post that? Or you did this, right? And have your answer ready. I'm doing market research. I'm making sure that I know the everything there is to know about my job. What are you doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Stacy, in LinkedIn, what is the minimum connections one should have? So I was going to say there is no minimum, but I will say this. I think you should have 500 because as long as you have 500, everyone says 500 plus, right? It just says 500 plus. It doesn't usually tell you a lot of times um, how many connections people have. It, I think in some places it kind of does, but as long as you've got like 500, that's kind of the, the sweet spot, right? Because whether you've got 501 or 5,001, it's not really a big difference. But the reason to have more connections is that it's going to connect you to more people, right? More connections you have, the more people you're gonna get connected to, the more information you're gonna see in your feed, the broader the information is that you're gonna be able to see. And, and it just opens up a whole world for you because the algorithm starts pulling in more and more content. 
And I think as you start to understand the platform, you'll be more strategic in your connections, right? You'll start connecting through with like, it just won't be random connections. So if you're connecting through the people that can add value or that are in your industry that you want to kind of make sure you, you're aware of, I don't see why there would be a number requirement in that. Just keep connecting through to people and, and keep adding value to your own network. I have a question here that I think is interesting. Um, well, having multiple job titles in your header on LinkedIn create a bad impression and have recruiters uh, basically thinking that you're not sure about the field you're in. Um, well, if you say multiple job titles, I think you, I would stay away from job title specific and make it more general, right? So rather than saying, um, you know, financial analyst, it would be finance professional, right? I'm a finance professional who does whatever and say what you do. So then that's going to put you in a bunch of different buckets, regardless of what the specific title is. Got it. i uh, got another question. Is your resume or your LinkedIn profile more important for job applications if catering for a specific job? I think you spoke a little bit about this because they're not one and the same and you can probably cater, you can customize your LinkedIn profile and resume according to what job you're, you're actually applying for. How do you feel about all of that? I think you definitely want to custom tailor your resume. And then, as I just said, if you make your uh, LinkedIn profile general enough to where it's got all the pieces in there and you can put the, the specific pieces in. Like, so you can say, I'm a finance professional who, and then you can list a bunch of different specifics. They might be um, in different industries or different functions, right? But you've got sort of a general overview and then you can put specifics under it. But then your resume is what you're gonna need to apply to the job, right? You can't, well, Let's say you can't apply to a job using your LinkedIn profile, but you can now if you apply directly through LinkedIn. Um, so there is that, right? If you're applying to one of those jobs where um, the job poster has allowed for um, for jobs for, for you to be able to apply using your LinkedIn profile, then those are always great because it's like, oh, one less thing I have to do. Like those are absolutely the, the best. It's like click. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stacey, we're, we're getting ready to close out, but I want you to answer this because, um, yeah, anyway, I, I, you might even have to screen share the show, but how do individuals no longer need to accept invites and people just follow you, like the both of you, right? So you know how the profile will, will list uh, follow this person, but there yeah. is a way to go through and connect. You have to go into your settings, I believe. It's in your settings. Um, and I'll, I'm gonna be 100% honest, I'm not 100% sure where, because LinkedIn changed mine for me. They automatically changed it. Um, and, but I, I do believe, you know, I'm gonna take that I, back. I, actually, I have the answer. Oh, you do? Because I was gonna yeah. say, I, at one point, it, you couldn't change it. It was something that was a LinkedIn, it, so, it, so, it depended upon how many, um, connections you have. There are people that require an email address, but if you click that more button, it'll, it'll, a drop down will come up and it'll allow you to connect. Oh, you're saying, gotcha. Sorry. I was thinking of the, the other way around. Yes. Yeah. The, the link, the connection is there. You can click yeah. more and usually it will be there. Some people though, regardless it's in their settings. So there are some people, no matter what you do, it does require an email address to connect with them. And that's because they've set it in their settings to do that. So if you're asking how to do it, you've got to go into your settings to do it. There isn't a way around it. If somebody has set their settings in that way and you want to connect with them, there is no way around it. And that's why I was saying like Google because you can sometimes find their email address. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, I would <laughs> like for you to share with our audience how they can stay connected with the amazing Stacy Gordon. Yes, so, um, well, I'll just scroll back to this page, right? Like, there's <laughs> my uh, LinkedIn, it's Stacy Gordon, um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, it's Rework Work, although if you want to also connect with me on Instagram, uh, my personal is Diversity Diva, but uh, always just finding Rework Work will, will connect you with me and with our, our team. And I, I really 
definitely appreciate you. On behalf of the National Urban League, Wanda Jackson, Kanji Jordan, Gabriella, and today's sponsor, Verizon, I'd just like to thank you uh, for, for being here and sharing LinkedIn Beyond the Basics. I'd also like to thank everyone that attended today. Uh, listen, we continue to do this every other week. Uh, so we have a guest coming up. And Stacy, I don't know if you have control or if Kanji has- I do, I have control and I'm gonna show it to you. I just wanna make one more comment because I saw a question here. I think it's an important one. Someone asked, can you create, do you create an account or profile even if you're unemployed? Yes, because you had a job at some point, right? <laughs> so yes, you should have a LinkedIn profile regardless. Indeed. All right. Well, go back, go back just one more for me. All right, listen, again, today's session sponsor is Verizon. Uh, please visit the verizon.com forward slash about forward slash careers page for opportunities about Verizon. Well, for opportunities with Verizon. Also, you will receive a survey after this webinar. Please opt in to receive information on careers at Verizon. I'd like to thank the team at Verizon for supporting the Digital Career Success Series, National Urban League, Urban League Jobs Network. Now let's go to what's happening next week, Stacey. Well, in two weeks, listen, this is gonna be a good one. It's the everyday entrepreneur with my man, Brandon Andrews. Uh, he is amazing. Uh, he's, you know what, you're in LA. I was gonna say he's out of DC. But uh, what I find really interesting about Mr. Andrews is he's the gentleman that goes around and identifies black entrepreneurs to become guests on Shark Tank. So that is really a claim to fame for him. And he's doing an amazing job, but he's coming up next. So we'll do that August 4th, 12 p.m. here on the Urban League Jobs Network Digital Career Success Series. I'm your host, Kenneth L. Johnson. Stacey Gordon, thank you so very much for joining us today. You were simply amazing as I thank knew you would be. Uh, connect through. I'm looking at my phone, Stacey. I already got LinkedIn invites, so I know you probably got a few your way too. Uh, we'll try to connect through and we can add value and support in any way. This is what we do. Kenneth Johnson, Stacey Gordon, National Urban League, Urban League Jobs Network Digital Career Success Series. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a great day. Thank you. Boys.